Okay, Fergal, speaking to you after a 4-2 to beat John Higgins, I think I could have very easily been speaking to you after a 4-2 victory over John Higgins this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, obviously, I won two frames well, made two 80 breaks, and then obviously the second and third frames, both on the black, so mm. had chances on uh, the first one. Certainly, I thought I'd pot it, just waiting for it to drop, and it stayed out. And um, so obviously, that could have been 2-1 or 3-0 up, obviously, would be a lovely position. And then even the last then, whilst I was behind, I had a good chance to get there's two reds inside Cushman at least I should have mopped up the few open reds and took it from there so um wasn't to be and is that just in terms of kind of match sharpness because you're obviously playing yourself in a match like that against somebody like John Higgins into a position where you can win the match but it doesn't just quite click at the key moment yeah probably so um obviously I wouldn't say I'm in a great winning habit at the moment um I'm definitely a lot more uh, the last month six weeks a lot happier with my game mm. Um, and when you're happy with the game, even regardless of results, that you know that that kind of gives you the confidence. Even if the last few turns haven't been good, but the couple of weeks before you're happy with your game, that, that I put more stock on that. Um, but obviously, then if you're not winning, the, um, uh, setting the winning habit, those couple of moments can uh, probably more likely to go against you. But I mean, you know, if, certainly the first one I thought I'd pot, and I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was overly nervous on it. Just I missed pots. They were they were tricky pots. They weren't. There were shots you could miss, you know, but obviously it would have been lovely if they had went in. And I was just briefly watching in the practice room yesterday, you looked sharp. Is it just, does it just need kind of one result to go your way and then that'll give you the little bit of confidence or, or you know, like maybe where momentum swings back in your favour? Is, is that how it kind of works at, at this level? Yeah, I suppose it's a little bit like, that, uh, like a footballer and he needs one to win off his backside just to get up and running. But, um, yeah, you know, I said I'm ha- happy enough with my game. Obviously, it would have been lovely to win and obviously go deep in this turn. But if I qualify next week, and then the UK Championship, so um, obviously it'd nice to w- be nice to win that qualifier for the UK Championships. But um, you know, if there's two terms this year, I was r- really looking forward to the most. It was it was the Worlds and the UK. You know what I mean? So um, terms I like playing. It's, it's good, good, good. I like, this, I like the system they have this year. So I'll sacrifice a bit of pain if if York ends up being. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And um, I know last year when I spoke to you, you were sort of saying, you know, if uh, if you see me not entered in a tournament, it's because my obituary will be in the newspaper or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there a sense now? If you you sort of were mentioning. I read an interview that you might be maybe more selective going forward. Why has that changed? What's the thinking behind that? Or, or am I picking that up wrong, perhaps? No, no, you're right. I, I, that was my quote. Uh, you know, I've retired and I'm here. I'm dead. Uh, <laughs> But obviously, the last couple of years, if you're not really doing so, uh, playing uh, playing as well, and not uh, you lose a bit of confidence in your game, it becomes less appealing. It's so it certainly wasn't appealing. Uh, if you, if you said the next two years are going to be like the last two or four, you know, I've no great interest in that. If you know what I mean, because you know, I've I've had loads of last thirty twos and last sixteens. So I don't need any more of them. But obviously, you're always hoping that uh, with an improvement of form, that you get that good week or a good run. You know, I mean, this certainly the last couple of weeks are a lot more happier with my game. But of course, any plans I had to pick and choose tournaments is gone because obviously the the World Snooker and fair play to them, they have that uh, twenty grand guarantee, mm. which you have to uh, enter all tournaments. So which will I do? And again, maybe that might be the very thing for me. If you're kind of the more, the more matches I play, more tournaments, obviously the more chances you have to get wins and get a bit of uh, confidence in in um, sort of match match confidence. Versus the fact that I'm happier with my game uh, means a lot. And I was speaking to Aaron Hill. He was saying in his Q school run, obviously you were involved there as well, but he sort of felt like you were, well, I'm not using his words. He sort of felt like you were putting a, the hand around him a bit, giving him advice, telling him what he had to do. Is that a role in terms of bringing on next the next generation of player players yeah. that you feel import, yeah, is important for you? Absolutely, yeah. Down the, down the road, um, you know, if I stop playing, and more than likely it's going to be in two years' time. Between coaching, uh, ideally, you know, players on the tour, uh, that kind of manager, coach, slash mentor, particularly obviously somebody young like Aaron, uh, or then you need to prepare all the professions. I feel I could I could help in some way, along with uh, obviously I'm already sort of putting a bit of work in with some of the amateur players, so I'm finding that enjoyable and rewarding. And obviously then down the road, obviously the likes of commentary or something like that, I'd love to do as well. So definitely down the road, and certainly if I, if I hadn't got through Q school, um, you know that I would have actively pursued effectively other players to potentially work with. Uh, but obviously down down the road, certainly in a couple of years, uh, you know, that's something I'd, I'd like to do. And I know SBI opened the, officially opened, it's been open since last year, but they, they officially opened their new academy in Carlo um, last week. Ken Doherty was involved there. 
is that an important thing? Is there another generation of Irish snooker players that can come and finally take up the mantle that yourself and Ken and Michael Judge have, have kind of left? Absolutely. I think Aaron Hill is obviously the, 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 the best prospect. Uh, like he's, he's got great potential. God only knows what he, he can do. You know, he's, he's, he, apart from being young, he's got a good game. He's hungry, puts the work in, he wants it. And if he, somebody wants it, that's, that covers a multitude. Um, but yeah, no, it was fantastic that finally uh, Snooker kind of had its, its facilities, whereas, you know, as popular as Snooker has been over the years and as successful as players have been, obviously, like Berg said, Ken won in the world, let alone a few others, um, probably lagging behind facility-wise, maybe other sports, more, more minority are not as popular. Mm. So for Snooker in Ireland to finally get an academy like eight, I was down there a couple of weeks ago, it uh, looks fantastic. Uh, so to finally see that was good because we've been talking about that since the 80s when I was a kid. Mm. You know, fine, we have a, a proper facility, proper academy. Um, and obviously then, apart from myself and maybe others, you know, uh, carrying on, obviously the likes of Aaron Hill, I think Ross Bullman is definitely a prospect. He's been a bit unlucky in a couple of Q schools, but I fully expect in the next year or two that he'll get on the tour. So obviously then, if you have Aaron, I suppose it's a bit more appealing if you're a kid watching to watch a 20-year-old 20, 20 like Aaron is supposed to a handsome 50 year old like myself it's probably easier to relate to them than like if they're only a few years old or whatever so um yeah no, i'd be very uh, confident that down the road there's good structure there that you know apart from aaron uh, and ross that hopefully you know the next five ten years you know i think that opening the academy that should be the goal within 10 years does ireland produce as a world champion uh, ideally myself but failing that to, prom- to promote the young players and just very finally, I've been asking a couple of the Irish players about an event. Obviously, it's great to have an event in Belfast. Yeah. Um, we sort of miss Scoffs, we miss City West. I know it was in the Bailey Allen in Galway for a while as well. Uh, maybe a Cork venue would be the most appropriate with the way the, the sport is going in the country. But yeah. would it be great to see a tournament on the south of the border as well as north of the border? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely think there's a, a market or an interest in it. You know, snooker is very, very popular. You can see that with the in, when they have in Goffs, a couple of those Legends events which I played in. Like they were packed out, you know what I mean? So... Ideally, I suppose, yeah, you'd harp back to those old, you know, the Irish Masters back in Goffsworth, maybe 12 players. But certainly I think there's uh, definitely room for a, a tournament in, Dub- in Dublin as well, maybe a few a few months apart. But I don't see anybody saying, oh, well, I'm not going to the tournament in Belfast because it was in the one in Dublin. Mm. Far from it. They're more likely to do both and take a week off and go to both. So and I said the interest is there. So, um, hopefully, so hopefully the combination, you need the TV, you need a sponsor mm. and you need a venue. I think if you get two, you'd get the third in line, you know, so hopefully that'll be lovely.